There we go. Welcome to Good News at Noon from Good Samaritan. Uh, yes, I realize it's almost four o'clock, but uh, twice before I tried to get this to work and it didn't. So now at four o'clock, I'm going to try again with Good News at Noon, especially because I wanted to share my story of the good news from Fox Hill with you as well. Um, I'm experimenting to see if there are ways in which I can improve the, the quality of my Thursday transmissions. So here we go, um, starting again with Bible passages for the basis of uh, the story today. The first is an Old Testament passage from the book of 1 Samuel in the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. And it reads as follows. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli the priest. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But again Eli said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that it was the Lord calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if you hear the call again, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood forth, calling, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for thy servant hears. The second reading is from the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Mark, in the first chapter, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John the baptizer was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the Gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And passing by along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately Jesus called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed Jesus. Today's story is entitled, Time for Fishing. So it is true that faith really matters out there in Fox Hill, Wisconsin, my hometown, out there in the prairie and the rolling hills of central Wisconsin. There hasn't been all that much to talk about as far as the weather goes. Usually everyone's talking about the weather, but this year there hasn't been any weather. One week it's in the 50s, the next it's in the 20s, but there's been no snow to really speak of. And all the fishermen are quite upset that Lake Madsen itself hasn't even frozen over solid. Driving from Wisconsin to New York, Pastor and Judy Martin realized that it's been a strange kind of winter all over. There was no evidence of snow anywhere along their trip. Their son David and his wife and two children live in Dutchess County in New York. That's north of New York City, but actually east of the Hudson River. Most of us from Wisconsin don't even realize that there is any part of New York east of the river. I don't know what we think about New York. Maybe that the whole state is New York City. 
or that Niagara Falls is about an hour away from the Big Apple. The pastor and missus had gotten a call from the kids that they needed Opa and Oma to babysit while young David and Donna, his wife, attended a business convention. It doesn't take much for the senior Martins to answer a call like that. Judy immediately began packing and told her husband to clear his schedule and get the car ready for a trip to New York State. Since he has semi-retired from the long-term pastorate at Fox Hill Lutheran Church, Pastor Martin has managed to keep himself pretty busy, filling in for nearby small congregations that don't have a pastor to lead worship. And so young David had made arrangements for his dad to be the guest preacher last Sunday at their little church in Rock City, New York. You may have heard the yogiism. When you get to the fork in the road, take it. Yogi Berra is famous for saying that. Well, in Rock City, when you get to the fork in the road, that's exactly where the church is. You can easily miss the little church if you're not paying attention. But the fork in the road is literally a three-pronged fork sculpture in the middle of a triangle of grass at the fork in the road. You can't miss that. Pastor Martin was thrilled to be able to fill in, even if his son and daughter-in-law would not be there. As he and Judy traveled east on Interstate 90, he reflected on what an honor it had been to be called by God to be a pastor of a congregation for all those many years at Fox Hill Lutheran Church. And what a joy it now was to be called by God to be a grandfather to a new generation of Martin grandchildren. At worship on Sunday at the Rock City Memorial Church, he would be able to fulfill both callings. After all those years of preaching in front of his own children, insisting on their proper behavior so as not to embarrass the minister and his wife, it was now a totally different experience to be Opa and Oma with your grandchildren. As he led the congregation in worship, he felt pure bliss as he looked at Judy helping the kids through the hymnal and drawing pictures on the bulletin. And the service went smoothly until, during a quiet lull at communion time, little Jennifer started singing Frosty the Snowman and started dancing in the center aisle, wiggling her little butt all the way up to the altar. It made a typically stodgy congregation break out in laughter during worship. And grandparents aren't at all embarrassed by that, don't you know? They take pride in the boldness and obvious singing ability of their two-year-old grandchild. We have a future choir member there, don't you know? Back at Fox Hill, Bobby Alverson received two calls of his own last Saturday night. The first was from Mrs. Bollinger. Now, Mrs. Bollinger had been his junior high Sunday school teacher some seven years ago. Bobby was now home from winter break from the State University at Pewaukee and was surprised to hear Mrs. Bollinger's voice asking for him. She had come down with a cold and wanted to know if Bobby would take over her Sunday school class the next morning with all those COVID precautions. Old Mrs. Bollinger is still teaching Sunday school, he thought to himself, and he immediately replied, Yeah, sure, you betcha. But then, as he thought about it more, he wondered if he had been a bit too hasty in his response. What if a better offer came along? Well, on a Saturday night, for Sunday morning, no, he would be okay. But he had no more hung up the phone when it rang again. This time, it was his father calling from Bob's Diner, where he had just heard that Lake Madsen had now frozen over enough to be declared safe to drive on. What do you say, Bobby boy? We'll haul the ice shanty out on the lake early tomorrow morning and get some quality fishing time in. But Dad, Bobby moaned, I just promised Mrs. Bollinger that I'd teach her Sunday school class for her tomorrow. Well, said his dad, it's up to you, Bobaloo. You've been itching to get out on the ice ever since you came home from college. Here's your chance. 
So what are you going to do? Oofta, thought Bobby. But then he realized what he had to do. Sorry, Dad, Bobby said. She called first. Maybe some other time. I have to work all next week, Bob, his dad answered. I know, said Bobby, but I'll have to go with my first call. Now, in 42 years of ordained ministry, Pastor Martin has never been known as a dynamic preacher. His pastoral care was top-notch, whether at the bedside or home of someone dying, or out on the ice sitting in a circle of guys around a hole, everybody angling for the same walleye. He didn't even enjoy fishing all that much. It was the shanty fellowship that was so important to him. So he was quite surprised when they arrived back home at all the mail they had received from upstate New York. Letters were postmarked from Red Hook and Rhinebeck and Pine Plains, every letter thanking and praising him for the fine sermon he delivered and the prophetic accuracy of his words. There had been only 25 people at worship, and here were at least a dozen letters, all describing his inspirational preaching in glowing terms. Pastor Martin tried to remember what he had said that would have excited them so much. He knew he had sent a sermon title to the church secretary for the bulletin, something like A New Vision for Eli, and he recalled that he had focused on the Old Testament lesson about how God's call of Samuel, the young boy in temple training, had opened up the dim and aged eyes of Eli, the temple priest and how we never know how or when God will open up our eyes and ears to God's call. But really? Was he really so eloquent about that? His questioning was answered when he opened the 13th letter. It was just a short note saying, Thanks for preaching about Eli. The Giants won. Oh my. They had gotten it all wrong. They were praising his sermon for all the wrong reasons, the least of which being that Eli Manning wasn't even the Giants quarterback anymore, and the Giants had lost and hadn't made it to the playoffs. Perhaps their vision had gone dim as well. Now, David Martin had never been called by God to be a prognosticator of football scores, unless, of course, it was for his beloved Green Bay Packers. Unlike Samuel, he had never been called by God to be a prophet. He had been called by God to be a pretty average pastor, every once in a while saying just the right words, every once in a while doing just the right thing. More than that, he had been called by God to be a husband to his wife, a father to his children, and now a grandfather. And that had been a true joy in his life and an amazing glimpse into God's concept of from one generation to another, forever and ever. But even more than that, he had been called by God to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Like Peter and Andrew, like James and John, his daily labor was changed from fishing for walleyes to fishing for people. For David Martin becoming a disciple, meant becoming a pastor, but it's different for everyone. We are all called to be disciples of Jesus, no matter what our job or occupation may be. We can be old, like Eli, or young, like Samuel. We can be Opa David, or little Jennifer. We can pass a football with pinpoint accuracy, like Eli did, and like Aaron Rodgers still does. Or we can surround a family in love, like his wife Judy had always done. We can be ordained as a pastor or inaugurated as a president. David thought back to that time when he first took God's call to be a pastor in the church seriously. He had been a teenager at senior high camp at Coin Point Camp Koinonia up in upstate Wisconsin. At an evening devotion around a fire pit, the campers were instructed to go off on their own in silence for 15 minutes. David had sat down on top of a rock beside the lake. 
By the time the singing of Kumbaya beckoned all back to the campfire, he felt that God was truly calling him to become a fisher of people. All that we are called by God to do, simply and immediately, like Peter and Andrew, James and John, is to follow Jesus wherever he may lead us. On Thursday night, resting from their long trip, the Martins were startled when the phone rang at 8.30. Now who would be calling at this late hour, Pastor Martin said as he made his way to the phone. The voice on the other end surprised him. Pastor Martin, it's Bobby, Bobby Alverson. Bobby, what's the matter? asked the pastor. Oh, no, no, nothing is wrong, said Bobby. I was just calling to see if you might like to go out on the lake with me tomorrow morning for some fishing. My dad has the ice shanty set, and I've been dying to find someone to go fishing with. How about it? Yeah, sure, you betcha, Pastor Martin answered immediately. You haven't been out on Lake Madsen yet? No, said Bobby. My dad asked me to help him last Sunday morning, but I had already gotten a call from Mrs. Bollinger asking me to teach her class. She called first, so I guess I had to do it. Not only was that your first call, Bobby, the pastor corrected, it was also your primary call. W what do you mean, asked Bobby. At your baptism and at your confirmation, preached the pastor, you promised to follow the call of Jesus, to share your faith with the world, and to help make new disciples to follow Jesus. Isn't that why you really wanted to teach the Sunday school class? I, I guess, said Bobby reluctantly. The pastor continued, and remember, Jesus called his first disciples away from fishing with their father to follow Jesus and become fishers of people. That would be their first call. Is that what that means, asked Bobby? That's what it's all about, Bobby, said the pastor. We all have a lot of jobs to do and a lot of choices to make. You answered the right call. You answered your first call. Well, Bobby paused for a moment. Then, what about this call, Pastor Martin? Do you want to go fishing with me tomorrow? I'll bring the hot chocolate, said the pastor, and I'll tell you all about my trip to New York. And that's the good news from Fox Hill, where faith really matters for every single man, woman, and child. Oh, and the married ones, too. Amen. Thanks for listening. I'd like to conclude by sharing with you the words to... Uh, pretty popular hymn that fits very well with the scripture lessons and with today's story. The hymn is entitled, Here I Am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. May God lead you as he calls you in various ways, in various forms, to share the good news. God bless you. Amen.